The whole of human history is full of secrets and mysteries. In fact, even now, in the age of science and technology, our whole world order is causing thousands of questions, many of which cannot be fully answered by scientists. Time Puzzle Crew tries to uncover some of those mysteries surrounding the mysterious places of Kazakhstan. Almaty is the largest city of Kazakhstan. It is a cultural, sports, and tourist center of the country. It is decorated with green gardens, with fountains, parks, and squares, as well as broad avenues and sparkling skyscrapers. Medeo's ice rinks and Cocteau Bay Tower are famous all over the world. However, the main attraction and even the symbol of the city is the mountains bordering Almaty from the southeast, which can be seen from any point of the metropolis. These giants create a unique landscape of beauty in Almaty. Their snowy peaks sparkling in the sun and the steep mountainside covered with forests. This fascinating panorama attracts tourists, travelers, and athletes like a magnet. However, they also give rise to legends and superstitions, promising certain death to anyone who dares to step onto one of those peaks of the mysterious mountains of the Ili Alatau. Watch now. What myths and legends were told about these majestic snowy peaks? The story about a black climber is very popular among the climbers. There was a moment. He stood somewhere at the distance of 500 meters from us. Our tents were almost blown out because of the energy. Why do even trained and experienced climbers die in the mountains? If a person is not 100% ready, the mountains may present such a gift. I mean some test which could be failed. Watch now. Tragedies and Secrets of the Ili Alatau. The Talgar Pass, majestic in its breathtaking beauty. The peak of Chkalov can be seen from here. However, just at its foot, there was a terrible tragedy in the 1,980 meter range, which killed seven climbers. This peak is very popular for climbing. It has simple routes, which can be passed even for beginners. So the group of beginner climbers from Leningrad came here in 1980 to practice climbing. A very experienced climber, Alexander Lipchinsky, climbing champion of Leningrad, was leading the group of sportsmen. He brought eight students to Kazakhstan who were eager to conquer this seemingly simple top, which is quite a rare scene for this place. The snow drifts, which are now, were higher than two meters in January of 1980. Therefore, when the group went climbing, the first man who was paving the path was changing every five minutes, because even an experienced sportsman could become exhausted quickly. So because of this reason, several groups have given up their plans and changed routes to safer ones, which were less snowy. But Lipchinsky's group decided to go anyway. They didn't cancel the climbing. And in the early morning of the 31st of January, seven climbers started their way up to the 1B route, and two observers were left at the foot of the mountain. Chkalov Peak is located on the Bogdanovich Glacier, near Talgar Pass. The mountain is 3,892 meters high. Nowadays, if you want to reach the beginning of the climbing route of this mountain, it's enough to go on to the breathtaking journey in a cable car, which is rising from the Medeo Rink. The rise lasts more than half an hour, and during this time you can see the stadiums and the Medeo Rink, Almaty's views stretching far down, and the tops of the century-old fir trees, and the steep rocky mountainsides. The end point of the cable car is the Talgar Pass, where the climbers began their journey to the Chkalov Peak. There are 16 categories of difficulty in the climbing routes of the top of this peak. The 1B category routes are considered easy. The steepness of the ascent does not exceed 25 degrees. The average length is about half a kilometer. Passing such a route does not require special equipment and large climbing experience. You shouldn't go to the mountains, like, I don't know, to just conquer something there. It's just a mountain cliff a heap of snow and ice, that's nothing. 
I mean, it's just like going for a walk on the street. I think sometimes people imagine that they will conquer a mountaintop and the mountain will fall down. If a person is not 100% ready, the mountain may present such a gift. Alexander Lipchinsky and his team did not expect a particular surprise that day. Even the 12 meter high snow cornices and drifts taller than a man's height were challenging the young people. Self-confidence, a desire to conquer the mountain and overcome their weaknesses made the climbers go up. According to the rules of Soviet mountaineering, great attention was paid to the safety during climbing. Groups were always accompanied by observers who remained at the bottom, looking after the climbers and, if it were necessary, they had to call rescuers by radio. In the frosty morning of January 31, 1980, seven Leningrad climbers were moving up persistently up the Chikalov Peak. They were paving the way through the two-meter-high snowdrifts. Suddenly, a huge mass of snow moved down on the people. Seven people collapsed down, flying tens of meters, sliding down the rocks, and a huge avalanche buried them alive. Here is the writing of a young climber, Vladimir Grachev, who was one of the witnesses of the tragedy. The previous day, Lipchinsky's group crossed the plateau and began to climb the Chikalov Peak, and the climbers weren't arranged in rope teams. Some of them were without helmets, and rising on a height of 70 to 100 meters, they clipped an avalanche formation. Here's when the countdown began. Every minute was valuable and could save the lives of the people who were left under the avalanche and survived. In such cases, the observers who were left at the bottom immediately called rescuers and climbers from nearby groups. It was quiet in the icy air. Observers were nowhere to be seen. The reason for this was another fatal mistake of Alexander Lipchinsky. The day was frosty and the route seemed to be easy. At the head of the group, the instructor said to the observers that they didn't have to sit there in the cold and wait the whole day. He told them to go to the house, which was at Talgar Pass, to sit there, drink some tea, and the climbers were going to climb up and climb back quickly. It seemed that very bad luck that day forced the people to make decisions that led to this tragedy. Contrary to all the rules, the observers left their points as Lipchinsky told them, and they went to the camp on the pass. If the observers had seen it all, they would have immediately called the rescue workers, and maybe some of them could have been saved. But observers were drinking tea until evening and began to worry when it got dark. As soon as they came out of the house and saw the mountain, they realized that the avalanche had happened. They immediately called the support group of climbers who were training nearby, but it was getting dark, and as a result, the rescuers weren't able to climb to the place of the tragedy until the next morning at 4 a.m. That's what Vladimir Grachev said about that day in his memoirs. The avalanche came down with lots of stones and bodies were severely damaged. All the bodies were in unnatural positions. They were frozen and they were very difficult to pack. Someone's hand was holding a burst of a lanyard from ice axe. Someone's skull was split and frozen brains were seen from the outside. It was strange to see the watch that was still ticking on a dead hand. One of the dead climbers' face was covered with a crust of ice. This means that a person was breathing for a while. He breathed under the snow, unable to get out. It is very hard to get out of snow layers that are even 20 to 30 centimeters thick, really, if it's pressed from above as a solid mass. If Lipchinsky had postponed the climbing or changed his route, or if the observers hadn't left their point, if the observers hadn't left the climbers without supervision, if the rescuers had been able to get to the scene of the tragedy immediately and valuable time had not been lost, this story has too many ifs, which determined the fatal fate of seven climbers. And it still remains a mystery. Why people who know that the mountain doesn't forgive mistakes would break all the rules of climbing?
local mountains know more than a dozen of such terrible examples. They give rise to tragedies and gloomy stories about the black climber, the Tian Shan virgin, or curses of long forgotten gods and ancient civilizations. Watch next. How to please the spirits of the mountain if you want to return from climbing. Buddhists have a ritual. The place where the gods live, it is forbidden to disturb their peace. Spooky stories and mysterious characters of the mountain legends. We had many different legends about the black climber and spruce, but some facts were true. Watch now, tragedies and secrets of the Ilya Latau. Mountains are geological formations that adorn our planet, and they appeared long before the appearance of mankind. Since time immemorial, people were feeling reverence in front of the mountains. The ancient gods often lived on their tops. Modern man has been living simple and pragmatic for a long time, but the snow-capped peaks make us remember and respect ancient traditions. For example, in India, climbers conduct mandatory rituals before climbing. Puja is a ceremony of sacrifice for the mountains. Buddhists have a ritual and, well, the people of the Himalayas, they tend to say that the high peaks are God's territory. This is a place where the gods live, and it is forbidden to disturb their peace. From ancient times, as climbers can remember, there is a ritual called Puja, where the Tibetan Lama comes and begins to read the prayer. At the same time, he sacrifices a pinch of rice, flour, grains of wheat, and a little bit of milk. It's quite a long ritual, and it is being conducted even in our days. It doesn't matter how many achievements of scientific and technological progress modern humanity has made. It doesn't matter how deeply the world has been explored. And we always have something inexplicable, something that makes us feel awe, especially when it comes to the mountains. This is the beauty of the mountains. Beauty makes everything run in such a mystical way. Maybe that's why there are lots of myths and legends of all sorts related to the mysterious phenomena which are born in the mountains. A very popular climber from all over the former Soviet Union, and maybe not only the Soviet Union, is the legend of the black climber. It says that one day two friends went to the mountains. During the ascent, one of them fell into an abyss and hung on to a rope. He couldn't get out himself, and his friend was afraid that he will drag into the abyss, so he cut the rope and left. And since then, the dead man turned into a spirit. The black climber roams the mountains and looks for the man who betrayed him and dropped him into the abyss. This legend, in different variations, is known to anyone who has ever spent the night in a tent on a windy, rocky hillside. It has been told by generations of climbers from mouth to mouth. And sometimes the climbers actually see something in the mountains that is not amenable to logic. There was even a moment when they were saying, look, Maksud, there is a spirit floating through the gorge, and he will be here soon. And I really saw something, something formless, which was changing its shape. I mean, it was lengthened, then decreased, some clot of the fog. It was so unusual. He stood somewhere at a distance of 500 meters from us. You know, there were lots of such occasions in the mountains over the years. I was escaping an avalanche twice. I survived a couple of rock falls, but I will not lie. I have not seen any of these characters, but I have a friend who knows people who have seen the black climber. I don't support some sort of mystical explanation. But the facts are a very stubborn thing. If it is fixed, if it exists, and you cannot explain it in terms of the rational, then there is another explanation. When I started digging in the Butakti settlement, there was no special funding. And often there were cases when we worked out into the afternoon. 
And when we arrived in the morning, we would find that the local boys were here. To make them stop climbing such high places, I started to tell them stories about the medieval burial ground. I started to tell them that in this ancient cemetery, the spirits roam here on the hills, that it is a spooky place, that dead men killed someone here. Then I had to stop exploring this place for five years. When I came here five years later, these territories were under protection. And employees guarding the settlement near the place said, aren't you afraid to dig there? I asked why. And they started to tell me of all of my stories that I made up. Of course, this was just to scare the local boys, but they were telling them as real facts. Moreover, one of the guards was fired because he was firing a gun when he saw these spirits. Of course, it is possible to tell such things with humor, but there is a lot of mountain stories about meetings with mythical creatures. Sometimes people even meet their own twins. However, scientists explain these cases of hypoxia. The higher a person climbs into the mountains, the more rarefied the air. It causes a lack of oxygen in the blood. This situation is aggravated by physical exhaustion of the climbers and dehydration of the body, as well as extremely low temperatures. Our crew reached the Talgar Pass. The height here, if to measure by the standards of a professional, it's probably not a very professional climber. Only 3,200 meters, so it's a childish height, the root of an easy category. However, even myself, as a man who was born near the Tian Shan, the Ili Alatau Mountains, I'm starting to feel the presence of the mountains. It is expressed in the fact that I experience mountain sickness, the so-called Gorni Ashka, throbbing of the temples and my nose burning up and my ears popping. I feel some kind of disorientation. With sharp movements, I began to experience loss and disorientation in space. I mean that if I absolutely will not move, I will stand straight. But when you try to make any movement from side to side, the head, as they call it, becomes dizzy. Hypoxia is not the only difficult circumstance accompanying the rise, but also it's an opportunity to overcome yourself, to mobilize all forces, and to force the body to adapt to difficult conditions. Of course, the climbers are working on hypoxia. The more experienced the climber, the longer he can be in the mountains. He trains, lives there, and he adapts to these conditions. But there are also newcomers who come literally from sea level, and rising to a height of 1.5 to 2,000 meters, they become disoriented, they feel dizzy, and there are signs of altitude sickness. Another signal that the brain is running out of oxygen is hallucinations. Often in this state, climbers cannot see that they are coming too close to an edge or trigger avalanches. And perhaps it is the choking brain which has become the author of the meeting with the Tian Shan Virgin or the Black Climber. In these moments, a person is on the verge of life and death. We had many different legends about the Black Climber and the Spruce, which was alive and devoured travelers, understand? But all of them are jokes and fairy tales, of course, but some facts were true. The age of these mountains is nearly 500 million years. The ridge was formed in the Caledonian era during the Middle Paleozoic period. Ili Alatau is one of the most northern arcs of the Tian Shan. Now its mountains are located on the territories of three countries, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, and China. The average height is 4,000 to 4,600 meters. Climbers and fans know the highest peaks of the mountain range well. Orjonikid's peak is quite near us, about 50 to 60 kilometers. The top of Talgar, which is 5,000 meters high, is the highest in the area. Here is the most dominant and beautiful top. When you look from the city, this is Nur Sultan Peak. Its height is 4,376 meters. Mountains are a zone of increased danger, but the nature of people always looks for some challenges. They strive to conquer nature, to subdue or to make an agreement. 
but ancient forces of the stones never reveal all of their secrets to the mere mortals, causing us to feel helplessness and a special magic in those cold, windy areas. It makes us remember all sorts of myths and legends, frightening the weary travelers. Well, people need something to talk about all alone in the long time under the stars. That's just the mountains. They create such an atmosphere when the people start telling each other horror stories, tales, and mystical events. Most of the legends born in the mountains have their own history, which is often too a legend. Once again, we remember the tales of the Black Climber, and though the mountains do not like to reveal their secrets, we have managed to solve one puzzle. How he was born, and where this awesome character came from. It was a quiet night dropped in the Ushba Plateau. A warm wind blew from the south. The glacier stood in silence. Suddenly two friends heard the sound of footsteps nearby. They listened and watched at the door. No man can be here, in this place, at this hour. Closer, closer, that's really close. The sounds of steps had stopped. Both of them were scared to death. The blood stopped to run through their veins. Finally, one of them decided to look out. Who has come? Fear paralyzed them. He opened the door and looked out. I assure you, such things cannot be seen, even in nightmares. A black dead body stood, its teeth shining in the moonlight. The black hole is where the mouth was. It didn't blink and looked straight on with his eyeballs. The black cloth covered his shoulder. The climber, almost dead from fear, stood awkwardly and asked, Who are you? The muffled sound responded, I was called differently before, but now I am the black climber. These lines are not very popular. They tell the story about a sad fate of a man doomed to wander after a terrible death in the mountains. For the first time, they were spoken by Sarim Kudirin. After graduating in 1958 from the philological faculty of the Kazakh State University, he taught Russian language and literature in school. He worked in the newspaper Friendly Children, and he was fond of poetry. The mountains were Sarim's passion ever since he was a child. It is no surprise that another passion of the young man was climbing. With the company of his friends, Kudirin made forays into the peaks of the Iliala Tau. And one day, he and his friendly company went out on one of such trips. They had been walking for a long time. They were tired. Although the peak is not complicated, when you carry a large load, you can become exhausted. They arranged a camp. It was a dark night, and the wolves were howling somewhere near. As people say, wolves and leopards and bears inhabited these places those years. Something was growling. Pebbles were rolling somewhere. In general, the situation was a little bit scary. Sarim picked up the guitar and suddenly composed a song about the black climber. The song didn't become very popular, but the story became a legend. That's why this legend is told in so many places, including ours. And often people don't know that this story is a local story, a story from the Tian Shan, or I'd say from Almaty. That's how Sarim Kudirin added his history to the treasury of the mystical tales of the Ili Alatau. Perhaps he could still write a lot of legends, but unfortunately the mountains didn't spare Sarim Kudirin. He died in the Caucasus, together with the team of Lev Mishlaev, on July 14, 1963, at 11 hours and 20 minutes, during the ascent of the Chatin Peak. The border with Kyrgyzstan lies right behind the mountain peaks. There is Choibolsin Peak, a place that can be called the birthplace of the Black Climber. After all, it was the place where Sarim Kudirin told the story of the Black Climber for the first time. Here in my hands is a unique book, which has only 250 copies. 
The Ballad of the Black Climber was published for the first time in this book. The book is written by Sarim Kudrin's friend, Alexander Luchtanov and Alexei Maryashev. They dedicated the book to Sarim. Despite the limited number of copies, the legend of the Black Climber has gained unprecedented popularity and became known far outside of Kazakhstan. Our crew has discovered the secret of the Black Climber, but the mountains still keep a lot of mysteries that have no rational explanation. And in the next program, we will go to the gorge of the Kizil Bulak and find the ancient fire temple. Watch us, it will be interesting. It was Puzzle Time and my name is Sergei Alexinok.